a farmer falls in love with the most coveted woman of the night in town, so he sacrifices everything to save her from her broken life. From a river, men gather to pan for gold when one cheers as he finds a good piece. In paradise, California, numerous men wait outside the palace while holding their tickets, hoping to be drawn in the lottery to spend time with Angel, the most sought-after woman in town. However, they protest when the Duchess announces the last winning ticket for the day, given that Angel is tired. At the establishment, a despondent Angel watches the men as her last customer pays with gold dust. Just then, she spots a mother and daughter in the distance, triggering memories of her childhood. In the flower field, Cleo, the housekeeper, called young Angel and mentioned her mother's request to get flowers since her father would arrive soon. Later, Angel's mother, May, tiddied her hair and reminded her to behave like a lady. Soon, her father, Alex, arrives but he's displeased to see his daughter. Despite this, the girl thanked him for the gifts he sent. Confused, Alex demanded to know about these gifts, so Angel mentioned candies and a crystal swan, causing him to look at May in suspicion. The nervous mother then instructed her daughter to leave, and when she was outside, Angel overheard Alex berating May for giving the expensive crystal swan to a child. May insisted that he needed to acknowledge his child, but Alex already had legitimate children and declared that he tried to prevent Angel's birth. Hearing this, Angel was devastated. After Alex left, the girl told her mother that she didn't want to see her father again. She then noticed the bruise on her mother's face, which May tried to hide. Convinced that she was the root of her mother's problem, Angel asked if Alex would stay with May if she was gone. However, May emphasized that their situation wasn't her fault. Angels pulled from this memory when Lucky called her for break time. They gather with their other friend May as they reminisce about their past. Lucky shares how she was abandoned by her mother and mistreated by her aunt. Because of this, she cut down her aunt's cherished tree, which crushed the woman's parlor. Despite relishing in her revenge, Lucky admits that she sometimes wished she hadn't done it since it led to her working for the Duchess. May then shares that her father sold her and made her believe she was heading to a royal palace. Lucky insists that hope gets them through their ordeal. So she asks about Angel's plans. However, Angel asserts that she doesn't look back or look forward to anything. The next day, Michael tends to his farm, though he prays for a partner to share his blessings with. He heads to town where he notices Angel walking with a bodyguard. Intrigued, he learns about the daily lottery for a chance to spend time with her. Even though he's surprised by her profession, Michael hopes she's the companion sent by God. Meanwhile, Angel remembers when her father abandoned them, leaving May devastated and Angel breaking the crystal swan in anger. Witnessing this, Cleo warned the girl about men's true intentions toward women. With no other options, May sold her jewelry for funds, only to discover that they were fake. The mother began to sell herself instead. One day, Angel expressed her longing to escape, and though May wanted this freedom for her daughter, she left to attend to another customer. Eventually, May got sick and passed away while praying with her daughter, clutching her crucifix. As May's body was prepared for burial, the Reverend gave Angel her mother's crucifix, which she threw into the water, angry that God had taken her mother. Cleo's words about men repeat in her mind as an intoxicated angel refuses to open the door for a frustrated customer. Soon after, the Duchess's bodyguard Magon enters and orders Angel to bathe. When she mocks him, he forces her into the tub, but the Duchess intervenes and instructs her bodyguard to prepare Angel for work. Moments later, Michael arrives as Angel's customer, though she notices his hesitance. She assures him there's no shame in their transaction, but Michael claims that he didn't go there for pleasure. Angel scoffs at this, suggesting that he's better off talking to someone at the bar. Despite her dismissive tone, Michael becomes curious about her and asks about her past, but she evades. He introduces himself as a farmer, boldly proclaiming his intention to marry her. Unimpressed, Angel points out that he's the fifth man to propose to her this week. Still, Michael offers her a better future and asks her to leave with him. Growing impatient, Angel tells him to leave as his time has ended. He promises to return, determined to pursue their connection further. Michael fulfills his promise the next night, paying double to avoid the lottery. However, the woman feels her conversation isn't worth his time and gold. He expresses his desire to take her away but is interrupted by Magon, reminding him that his time is over. On another day, a girl, Rebecca, expresses interest in Michael, so Angel gives her blessing to pursue him. That night, Rebecca intercepts Michael as he heads toward Angel's room, asserting that the woman doesn't want him. Disappointed, the man confronts Angel, pointing out the awful condition she could leave if she went with him. Offended, Angel snaps back at him, but their argument leads to a kiss. However, Michael stops her from escalating their moment as he hopes that their first time will mean something to Angel. Frustrated, Angel dismisses him as naive before he storms out. As she watches him leave, Angel recalls how after May passed away, Rab took her from Boston to find her a home, having promised her mother to look out for her. However, he took her to where Curtison's work, so Sally, one of the workers, urged Rab to take Angel away. Ignoring this, Rab took Angel upstairs to wait for her new guardian. While waiting, the man drank some brandy from the office, which the owner of the establishment, Duke, and his bodyguard, Colin, witnessed. 
Rab intended to sell Angel to Duke, but the man ordered his bodyguard to end him, offended that he consumed his brandy without permission. Witnessing this, Angel went to Duke at his command, scared for her life. This was when the girl was renamed Angel, as she began to work for Duke. Living under his wing, she adapted and learned to please him. Years later, Angel saw her father among Duke's clients, but he didn't recognize her. She seduced him into paying for her services, then revealed their relationship afterward as revenge for her mother. Out of shame, her father ended his life. Afterward, Sally helped Angel flee, leading to Duke ending the former's life. On her voyage to California, two women suggested selling their services to the male passengers to avoid them taking them for free. Angel reluctantly agreed, but upon reaching their destination, the women stole her earnings and left her beaten. With these thoughts in mind, Angel shares with Lucky about her mother, describing her as beautiful but shattered. Worried, Lucky checks on her and notices that she might be sick, though Angel thinks it's just stress from Michael. When asked if she regrets not going with him, Angel asserts that no man will ever own her. Lucky remarks that the Duchess would never allow her to leave anyway, but the woman reveals that they have an agreement that when she's ready, she'll receive her money and leave. With that, Angel confronts the Duchess, requesting her gold to establish her own life through marriage or independence. The Duchess belittles Angel's ability to sustain a home and points out that her staying at her establishment also costs her money. Angel contradicts this since she only gets ration food while the Duchess gets luxuries due to her work. She then defiantly smashes a teacup and mocks the Duchess for being undesirable. Furious, her employer reminds her how she found Angel beaten and with nothing, yet she turned her into a princess. The scared Angel apologizes and begs to leave. However, the Duchess threatens to add the cost of the broken cup to her debt, which surprises Angel since she doesn't know she has any debt to the woman. Without explanation, the Duchess then summons Magon to lead her back to her room. Magon uses this chance to take advantage of Angel. Still defiant, Angel mocks him, leading him to harm her instead. On the farm, Michael wakes up with a foreboding feeling, prompting him to visit Paradise the next day. There, he finds a wounded Angel. Enraged, he insists on taking Angel with him and pays her supposed debt to the Duchess. This makes Angel relent, so she leaves them. Then, Michael proposes marriage to Angel, and this time, she accepts. On their way to Michael's farm, they encounter the Duke's carriage who doesn't notice the woman. The next morning, Angel wakes up in Michael's home and insists on repaying her debt to him. Ignoring this, Michael gives her clothes to change into, sharing that they belong to his deceased sister Tessa. Angel remains uninterested and even removes the ring he'd given her, which apparently belonged to his mother. Despite his sincerity, Angel declares she won't stay long to avoid becoming a servant. But Michael counters that marriage is in servitude and returns the ring to her. Weeks later, a recovered Angel makes her escape while Michael's away. The man goes after her, but only to provide supplies for her journey. He also highlights how Paradise is far away with the Duchess and Magon waiting for her, while his home is near and filled with warmth and food. He then leaves Angel to decide which way to go. As night falls, Angel returns to Michael's house where he cares for her, a gesture she finds unfamiliar. Still refusing to believe in his sincerity, Angel tells Michael that she'll only stay to repay her debt the next day. With this, she helps around the farm and the house. The two spend the day together, with Angel discovering new things to enjoy. That night, Angel invites Michael to sleep beside her, but he declines as he waits for the right moment. He then goes outside to swim in the lake while Angel watches him fondly. The next night, Angel dreams of the Duke finding her and taking her away. Seeing her distressed, Michael comforts her and takes her to the hilltop to watch the sunrise. There, he shares his vision of a beautiful life with Angel. However, the woman feels undeserving of this life due to her past. Michael reassures her that she didn't choose her past, but she can choose their future together. She then points out that Michael hasn't even touched her, thinking that he's disgusted by her previous work. The man assures her that he's just waiting until it means something. They then share a kiss, and finally, they spend time as husband and wife. Elsewhere, a drunk Paul, Michael's brother-in-law, visits Tess's grave before going to the farm. The farmer greets him and asks about his gold penning journey, but Paul admits it hasn't been successful. Michael then introduces him to his wife, but the man recognizes Angel from the palace and notices she's wearing Tess's clothes. When Michael leaves for the barn, Paul tells Angel that his brother-in-law deserves a better woman. So he asks how she convinced Michael to marry her. She shares that he begged her to marry him, but Paul doesn't buy this. He declares that he'll do something about her before leaving to meet with Michael. While helping Michael in the barn, Paul expresses his worry about Angel's true intentions. This angers Michael, so he punches Paul and demands him to respect his wife. Knowing he's still grieving Tessa, Michael urges his brother-in-law to go to paradise for a fresh start, even offering money and supplies. Late that afternoon, Angel shares with her husband that Paul was angry that she didn't recognize him as one of her clients. Michael emphasizes that she is not that person anymore and shares his hope that they can start a family together. With this in mind, Angel remembers when Duke hired a doctor to get rid of her child. This memory troubles her, especially now that Michael wants to have children with her. Scared that she can't give him what he wants, Angel asks Paul for a ride back to paradise the next day. 
However, while resting, the man demands pleasure as payment. So Angel reluctantly agrees, though she feels disgusted afterward. Moments later, Paul drops Angel near town as he doesn't want to be seen with her. Before parting, Angel tells him that he's betrayed Michael by asking for her services. In Paradise, Angel discovers that Magon was killed for burning down the palace. May and Lucky also perished in the fire while the Duchess lost everything, including Angel's gold. With nowhere else to go, she agrees to work at the bar, giving the owner free services as compensation. Paul soon returns to the farm, where his brother-in-law accuses him of taking Angel to town. Seeing his guilty look, Michael sends him off before he gets tempted to harm him for what he'd done. Michael then charges to paradise and stops Angel from being with another customer. He asks Angel if she wants to leave, and when she says yes, Michael takes her hand, only to find some of her patrons blocking their path. Still, Michael bravely fights them off before escaping with his wife. On their way home, Angel confirms that Michael knows what happened between her and Paul. So she asks why he came for her. Michael says it's because he loves her, and this silences her. That night, Angel sees Michael crying in the barn. Forceful, she goes to the lake the next day and scrubs herself to wash away the guilt, hurting herself in the process. Michael stops her, but she insists that she's unclean. Still, Michael asserts that he forgives her before taking her to the woods. There, Angel admits to Michael that she struggles to love because of her past. Sympathizing with her, Michael reveals his own demon, his father, who was a plantation owner. He recalls promising to free the servants upon his father's passing, which made the man take him to the servants' quarters. He then sent a woman named Ezra to tempt Michael, but she taught him about God and forgiveness. Michael freed Ezra and left home. He reflects that sometimes they have to leave their past to find their true selves. With this in mind, Angel gradually adjusts to life on the farm while Michael watches her with admiration. One day while traveling, the couple encounters the Altman family stranded by the roadside. Elizabeth, the mother, is pregnant and unwell, so they invite them home and prepare food. As Michael and the father, John, talk, Angel cares for Elizabeth. Later, Miriam, the oldest daughter, wonders how the couple met, so Angel tells her the true story. Although the woman laughs initially, she apologizes, realizing that it's the truth. Days later, Elizabeth gives birth just as Paul returns to ask for Michael's forgiveness. As days go by, Angel watches the other family fondly, making her wonder about that kind of life. One evening, John announces they're naming their son after Michael and that they've bought the land nearby for their family to stay. As the group celebrates, Angel notices a bond between Miriam and Michael, making her jealous. The next day, she admits to Michael that Miriam might be better suited for him. To prove this, she confesses that she can't have children anymore because of what Duke did to her. Though surprised, he reassures her of his love and belief that nothing is impossible. Still feeling guilty, Angel cooks dinner for Michael then brings them to the hilltop, where they share an intimate moment. This is her way of saying goodbye as, the following day, she writes a letter to Miriam asking her to marry Michael. She then hitches a ride to town. When Miriam finds the letter, she rushes to Michael's house, urging him to go after Angel. However, Michael believes that his wife should return by her own choice. Days later in San Francisco, Angel impresses the cafe owner, Virgil, and gets hired as a cook. Her efforts pay off as the cafe becomes popular. However, Duke's bodyguard Colin sees her, and soon, the cafe is burned down. In the aftermath of the fire, Duke and Colin approach Angel. She threatens to call for help, but Duke complains that they started the fire and warns that they'll harm Virgil if she doesn't obey them. With no choice, Angel follows them to Duke's new business. In his quarters, another girl, Rosie, is there. So her employer sends her away. Horrified, Angel questions the man about Rosie, but he merely instructs her to perform on stage later. After he leaves, Angel's heart breaks when she overhears him punishing Rosie and another girl next door. Soon, she's forced to dress up for her performance. In tears, Angel prays for the first time, asking God to at least help Duke's other captives. Just then, she sees her mother on stage, urging her to reveal the truth. With this, Angel walks on stage and tells the crowd about Duke's mistreatment of her and his other captives. As the audience gets horrified, Duke accuses her of lying and drags her away. He decides to kill her, but a man from the crowd intervenes and saves her. Angel uses the chance to save the others before escaping, fighting Colin on their way out. With the trio escaping, the crowd sees them and confirms that she was telling the truth. Because of this, the people swarm Duke and hang him. Three years later, Paul finds Angel in San Francisco and follows her to the house of Magdalena, a school and shelter for women seeking a fresh start. She asks about Miriam and learns that she has a family now. Angel assumes that she married Michael. But to her surprise, Paul reveals that Miriam is his wife. Angel insists that the woman is perfect for Michael. But Paul explains that Miriam chose him while his brother-in-law is still waiting for her. Hearing this, Angel instructs Paul to tell Michael that she's gone so he can find a woman who can give him children. Finally realizing that she left because she couldn't give Michael a family, Paul tearfully admits he was wrong about her. He asks for her forgiveness for how he treated her and for betraying Michael. However, Angel reveals that she'd already forgiven him long ago. Paul then persuades her to return with him because Michael is suffering. 
but Angel believes she's needed at the shelter. Still, Paul tells her when he'll leave so she can decide if she'll join him or not. The next day, Paul returns to his pregnant wife. Meanwhile, as Michael tends to the land, Angel approaches him. She confesses her love for him and apologizes, revealing her real name is Sarah, which she hasn't told anyone. Touched, Michael kisses her and returns her ring, which Sarah promises to never take off. Years later, Sarah and Michael's family grows as she becomes pregnant with their second child, fulfilling the miracle that they prayed for.